सहना सहनो महत् सह वीरवाहै तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाषावै ओ long association with the things makes you believe in the reality of the relationship when you constantly associate with something and you have been associating with your body from the very birth therefore over a period of time you start developing a relationship with the body and the reality of the body comes up that is what swami ramatirtha says realization is i have so many bodies to work through i am not dependent on this one body why do you have to arrogate this one body all the relationships that you have with the world is through this body so every relationship works through the body the relationship also starts appearing real and that's how you get attached the process of attachment is that and that's what he is explaining what is the problem says page number 237 last paragraph attachment is a prime cause of mental agitation and sorrow when you are attached to material objects to wealth you are riddled with worry and anxiety anxiety to produce more and more and worry about preserving or losing it thus a newly fixed carpet in your house a china you value or any such prized possession can cause mental agitation suffering and sorrow if you are attached to it similarly a boy attached to a girl mother attached to her child would cause the mind to be disturbed when you are driving your personal expensive car through a rough and rugged road your heart throbs as the same ride in a hired car becomes enjoyable thus when you are detached you enjoy the world that explains why you enjoy tragic movie a horror movie shakespeare's play hamlet was filmed with the famous actor sir lawrence olivier it depicted a great tra- tragedy every bit of it was very sad melancholic yet magnificent it drew millions of admirers they enjoyed the movie thoroughly many saw it over and over again there was a charm about it that kept everybody spellbound notwithstanding all that would anyone desire to be prince hamlet in the movie would anyone like to be involved in those tragic circumstances everyone may enjoy the movie but none would like to get anywhere near the scenes much less get mixed up with them if that be so what makes it so attractive so enjoyable how does a sad movie make millions happy a careful study you find that the enjoyment arises from one's aloofness from the happenings on the screen it is one's detachment from it not being involved or entangled in it that's the secret he says the 
secret of enjoyment is to get detached through detachment alone you get enjoyment now ignorantly we believe enjoyment is only when you possess something only when you have it when you contact it you enjoy it by dropping it how can there be any enjoyment by detachment how can there be any enjoyment and because we believe detachment is to move away physically that he has already explained it has got nothing to do with moving away physically it's not that you drop things physically and then enjoyment is, is going to be there because we believe few things in life gives us joy so more and more i have it i will be that's called attachment how do you develop it you go somewhere you eat something you see something you hear something for the first time you go and see eat hear anything you experience that experience is not the issue what you do after the experience is what makes all the difference after the experience you mentally relive that experience in a particular way if that experience is good you relive it in one way if the experience is bad painful you you live it in another way so when you are living that experience what you have to understand is experience is not the issue it's not the experience the pro pro problem after the experience you define that experience in a particular way that is a that is a real thing you interpret that experience in a particular way experience happens subsequent to that is your interpretation of that experience as pleasure pain joy sorrow etc if you experience that as a pleasure then you develop one way of thinking you interpret it as pain then you develop in another way it's not the experience remember it is your interpretation of that experience because your interpretations will keep changing isn't it we have we all have heard the story many times a man's house is in fire is standing outside of the street and crying oh my house is on fire under fire under fire now suddenly the neighbor says your son has already sold it then what happens after half an hour the son comes he says yeah agreement was done but i have not received any payment and we have not registered that agreement also we are planning to do it next week which means it's not sold now he says it's not sold now what happens say him crying again oh he starts crying again now the experience of seeing that house in fire is the same thing but his interpretation keeps changing see once that interpretation defines this is all vedanta says in life it is not what you experience how you go through the experience how you go through means what how you interpret it how you are going to evaluate it the students who had scored 96 crying the fellow who had scored 47 throwing a party 
I'm saying it my own self. You know, my own friend. He's got 96. The fellow is very upset. He left the college. He left early because he was very, you know, upset. Because first time in his life, after I went to his house, his mother told me, first time he is used, he is getting 96. I said, first time 96, you should be happy, no. Then his mother told me, all this he has been, you know, getting only 100 out of 100 in maths. In statistics, this time, you know, he has got only 96. So he is, is crying. And they asked me, how, how much you scored? I told my score, I'm not going to tell you people. Okay. <laughs> right. I told them very proudly. You know, my score. Oh, half of what he had scored. Okay, likely more than half. That's all. And I was so happy. You know, with this, you are so happy, with that, that fellow is crying. Now, what is the difference? I'm not saying I'm right and he is wrong. You see, it's nothing to do with it. It is how you are going to interpret that experience. That same experience you interpret in one way, it gives you pleasure. You interpret in another way, it gives you pain. So far, there is no issue. Up to this also, Vedanta says it's okay. You have no issues. Next step is where the whole thing starts. Step three. Third step is this. First stage is stage one. You go through the experience. Can you avoid that? Not possible. As long as you are living, you will go through experiences. And can you avoid interpretations? That also not possible because every experience of yours, you will interpret one way or the other. I am not going to do any interpretation of any experience of mine. I am just going to live. It's not possible for a human. So that also Vedanta says, okay. Third step is where the Gita Krishna gives a beautiful formula. The problem starts only there, he says. What the, you start musing on that. You start mentally reliving that experience again and again. Be it pleasant one or the painful one, doesn't matter, but you will re relive it. You have no choice. You are going to relive it. When you are going to be reliving that experience, then what option do you have? It says there are two things you do when you are mentally reliving. One, you will start entertaining on the qualities appreciating the qualities of that object or being. Or you would go on repeating the pleasant or the painful experience that you have gone What is referred in Vedanta as Sobhana Adhyasa and Sukha Adhyasa. You just go on repeating it mentally again and again and again. How beautiful. So you see that, you saw that car which you saw on the parking lot. Somebody has parked that car. You see that car, how beautiful it is? Jet black. Fantastic that car is. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And then you keep standing there and staring at that car. That neighbor who looks, he, he got that car new. So he says what? Okay, come on, come on, man. I'll take you for one drive. Let's go for a drive, he says. So you get into the car, you go for a drive. All that you have to do, you don't have to close the door at all, sir. All that you have to do is what? Just bring it to closer, that's it, and leave it. It closes by itself. And the seating position, the comfort, the feel that you have when you sit inside, the upholsteries, the cabin inside, this, that, the acceleration, it's the, the speed, the braking system in that, the audio, it is so silent. 
you just pull down the window so much of noise bangalore traffic is so much now started now just pull up the windows what is it absolutely silent so what are you going how is it going to be very comfortable okay. uh, what are you doing all this repeating mentally wow 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 you are appreciating the qualities of that object i am giving the experience with reference to the pleasant one the painful also the same thing you can repeat you see painful also you will be repeating on the quality of the object oh did you see that so shabby the, the yeah, have you see did you check that you know the dashboard that plastic so low quality plastic you see that you know steering the angle of the steering and did you check that you know the seat this one not good not that this is a problem that is a problem this is a one this is a one you go on repeating on the other if it is a pleasant one you repeat it one way if it is pain you repeat it another way either case you are repeating the quality that is the catch or the sukha the joy ah beautiful no super what a taste what a taste and the fellow goes to the house and says what you are also making sambar you know how fantastic they prepared in their house sambar how is this how is that you know, eat here eat there what taste what taste what you know when they bring in the steaming that aroma itself is kindling hunger very nice so what are you going to do so what are you repeating now that the pleasantness that you experienced or the pain that you have experienced you go on repeating mentally until you go on repeating this mental repetition causes an affinity with that object or with that experience of the object or being after that only all this problem starts before that there is no problem at the time of experience no problem at the time of interpretation also there is no problem much it's okay you can't avoid it. you can learn to interpret better to convert everything but that is not possible unless you are really off you should be able to understand a painful experience as a painful experience and a pleasant experience as a pleasant experience don't try to convert a painful experience into a pleasant experience this is what we do in the name of philosophy spirituality we think all painful experiences i'm going to see as the bright side in that what is the bright side of this then i say whenever you have pain you know play, 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 pleasure also do you see the dark side there huh? we never do that you know only when you this is what people say what is the secret of your success right decision what is the secret of your right decision wrong decision you take all wrong decisions out of which you learn you can't be learning out of your pain don't don't make that mistake now we believe now interpretation is what is going to give me that joy or sorrow now let me start interpreting everything positive that is not possible you see what is positive about corona so long as you are not getting it it is positive Hmm? the moment you get it what happens so long as your business is not affected by corona corona is okay then once your business goes off then what 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 will you say about corona economy is you know slowed down fall 
those things how do we interpret now a painful thing should be understood as painful a pleasant experience should be understood as a pleasant experience don't try to somehow try to convert pain into pleasure you know that's another mistake we make as if those things are all is not essential for us directly connected to attachment attachment comes after you have interpreted after you have interpreted it you call it as a pleasant experience or a painful experience then you start entertaining a thought it is good 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 how nice it is how nice it is how nice it is the play experience now what happens sir you will start going towards it this is where the whole problem comes now what happens is up to this point you don't recognize any issue at this juncture only something very peculiar happens here the person starts feeling genuinely the only way for me to have happiness in life is to go back to that only through that particular object particular being alone i can be you see that if at all i have love in my life that love is possible only from that girl if at all i have to have joy in my life is only through that there is no other source now once you fix your source of this one you have quarantined it you you are you had made it exclusive prerogative of that particular object or part, that particular being alone is capable of giving you joy no other source you are you go blinded to all other sources now the only source is that person or that object you are totally dependent on it for what for the very possibility of you to experience happiness joy contentment pleasure whatever you want to call it all that is going to be possible only through that is what you will start feeling and not only that it works one more also this is the only source then what about all other sources this is going to be the only source of happiness to me then all other sources becomes pain to me all other people become the source of pain to me this person alone becomes a source of pleasure means everyone else becomes a source of pain understood that is that's why you know we say love is an empty sound i love you i love you what love you you cannot why because you are going to that person itself as a beggar begging for love from that person you are demanding attention from the other person you are a beggar a beggar is always shunned you know we nobody will entertain a beggar some of them do this also in the pranks you know they do abroad i have seen few videos very interesting videos a fellow is a multi billionaire but he walks into the you know coffee shop in a you know torn clothes dirty torn he just walks in and asks for coffee something he asks the first reaction from the owner is he says get out they just you know throw them out they get out first you are disturbing here and then the fellow gives his credit card 
you know, they have a different card itself. Seeing the card, that fellow gets scared. Oh my God, you have this card with you? Yes. I don't know whatever the credit card is. I know only one Visa card. Other than there are some credit cards, you know. It's exclusive cards. It's not there with anyone. Fascinating to see those videos. Some of them will be parked their car, you know. Lamborghini parked. And this fellow just walks out and he comes back. And two fellows are standing in front of the car. They want him to take a picture. He says, I'll take the picture. Give me that. They say, nah, get out. And the fellow chases them out and he gets into the car and goes. Well, he's the owner of the car. It's fascinating to see those videos. How do we see that? If this alone can give me joy, everyone else and everything else becomes pain. This is the problem of attachment. Renunciation says, when you get in, you get into relationship where you should have the capacity to say, let me be the source of happiness to you. Or are you getting into a relationship keeping the other as a source of my happiness? If you keep the other as a source of your happiness, beggar, and beggars are never entertained. They just, you know, reject beggars. That is a catch here. Ignorance says, if there is enjoyment possibility, it can be only through you. Renunciation and knowledge are synonymous. Is that? Knowledge says, it's just the opposite. If you have to enjoy something that is possible only with a dispossessive attitude, a mental distancing. Attachment is clinging. I can't, I can't afford to take that whole class on attachment because that's why he has written an exclusive book, The Holocaust of Attachment. Now I have to explain the entire book first. Okay, I have to explain this part, part of this Vedanta treatise. Is the entire book there? That book itself needs explanation. Oh, what, are, what, what happens with attachment? Almost every human being suffers from the nagging weakness of attachment. Oh, I missed this paragraph. When you look upon a movie as a witness, you enjoy it. That's why this example. You are, you are just watching that movie. That's it. You are not in the movie. The tragic movies when you watch, you say, Ayo, Bhavam. You say all that. You can say all those things, but you will go back to it. You see, Dilip Kumar. Da? Dilip Kumar. King of tragedy. is known as King of tragedies. A legendary personality. But how many could go and watch? Even today, you see that movie. Is that that? Uh, what is that? That uh, old hero. I'm just missing the movie name. It just slipped out of my mind. Shahrukh Khan also did that. Devdas. Devdas. Original Devdas. Now you see that and see Shahrukh Khan. Okay only. You know, Shahrukh Khan's performance looks okay in comparison to Dilip Kumar. Fascinating one. Yeah, you can imagine what would be Dilip Kumar's level. When Shahrukh Khan looks okay in front of him, Devdas. 
amazing to see that. Because moving on this, you know. But you will go watch that movie, appreciate that movie and all that. Would you like to go through that, what Devdas went through? Would you say, wow, superb, sir. So what I'm going to do? How many of us would love to become like Devdas? How many movies have come in that same, you know, genre? Same thing. Similar movies only. Only hero name is different, heroine name is different. The situations are different, but essentially, same thing. Tragic movies. You will enjoy that movie, you will watch that movie, you appreciate that movie, but you wouldn't want to be part of that movie. What is the secret? That's what he says, renunciation, detachment. Detachment is the secret in this. When you look upon a movie as a witness, you enjoy it. When you get directly involved in it, you suffer. Some even sob, they will keep crying. So it is with the world. Keep your mind anchored to the divine self within. And look at the world as you would see the movie. You must learn to live in your home, with your family. Run your office with your associates. Meet the world impersonally as a Sakshi witness without getting attached to them, entangled with their affairs. You look at the phenomenal world thus from the impersonal angle as a Sakshi. Do it objectively. It lends a charm. It is beautiful, wonderful. You enjoy every bit of it. But if you view it personally, lose your objectivity and get involved, entangled in it, you suffer. Your life turns miserable. It's a universal law. You can't do anything about it. This is a law, he says. Almost every human being suffers from the nagging weakness of attachment. To raise above it, you need to strengthen your intellect with spiritual knowledge. A knowledge which exposes the absurdity of your personalized relation with the world, your immaturity. You begin to understand the futility of such relation. With knowledge seeping in, you gradually develop a sense of detachment towards the world. The dawn of detachment drives away the mist of worry and anxiety, leaving you in peace and bliss. Then detachment. So you gain that knowledge, you get detached. Once you get detached, as a consequence of that, this comes up. It is parallel. And don't think it's a cause and effect relationship. It's not a cause and effect relationship. It is, it is parallel. It is, this is a synergic relationship. It's not a cause and effect relationship. It happens together. Therefore, we believe it is. It is as though, you know, this is how it is going to be happening. Like the, the spiritual evolution or renunciation, detachment, all this. The moment that arrogating spirit stops, the bliss, peace surfaces. This stops that surfaces exactly like you have put a curtain, you remove the curtain, light comes. Isn't it? There's a sunlight, daytime, not, not in the night. Okay. During daytime, you have drawn the curtain. Therefore, your room is dark. Now, you remove the curtain, what happens? Light comes. Now we think, me removing the curtain and light coming is not a cause and effect relationship. Remember, it's not cause and effect. If that is so, 
you removing doesn't oblige the sun god the sunlight need not oblige to come in suppose if sun decides sunlight decides now you draw the curtain you close you know remove the curtain does it mean i will walk in now what can you do the shastras they give a beautiful example the scriptures give a fantastic example here the example of pot space and total space see you smash the pot the pot space merges with the total space we say but is the merger cause and effect relationship they say no 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 because factually there is no division itself at least in the curtain there is a division created isn't it that says shastri example are far better than our examples they give a fantastic example smashing the pot doesn't is not the cause for the pot space merging with the total space why the walls of the pot had never divided the space first for the rest of all is it the walls of the pot cannot divide that space because walls of the pot itself is existing in the space the space inside that pot the wall the space occupied by the wall of the pot and the total space outside all three are together always you can never you can never say but from our angle we will say what the walls of the pot is dividing pot space total space there is a division created is our ignorance actually speaking in reality that's not the case similarly this arrogating spirit stops the bliss surfaces it's not a cause and effect relationship in reality but it will always appear to us like that so don't fall for the appearance space please understand the reality you know it is little tight only to understand you know think on that think over this idea how is it that renunciation that's why he says the dawn of detachment drives away the mist of worry and anxiety it appears like cause and effect relationship this comes that goes then next immediately he says leaving you in peace and bliss so this goes which means what peace and bliss was always there renunciation is not detachment is not knowledge detachment remember i we have seen in the last class yoga knowledge renunciation detachment yoga all these things are same these all synonymous terms okay so when the detachment comes this is the out of your immaturity because of your ignorance you create it like that your ignorance makes it believe as though it is is it is working the other way around but he says it's not the case it is happening in the it's parallel parallel it is coming now how how can they come parallel sir that's how it works when it works it works like that so he says this is too heavy the idea so i told you whenever the idea gets too heavy immediately he will lighten it up with one story you see so that's what he does immediately because he knows it's too idea is getting more and more heavier so immediately he gives one small 
story here. Two childhood friends happened to meet after a long lapse of time. One of them was a successful businessman. The other, a spiritual mendicant, sannyasi. Engrossed in conversation, they lost track of time. Any, any time you have conversation with sannyasis, you will forget time. Engrossed in conversation, they lost track of time and reached the bank of a river late in the evening. They had to cross over to the other side. The boatman refused to ferry them across as it was past his working hours. The side of the river was infested with wild animals. The businessman offered the boatman a chunk of money. The latter yielded. They were ferried across to the safer side where the businessman mansion lay. That night, after entertaining his guest with supper, the businessman inquired, Tell me, friend, of what use is your stand of renunciation? If I had not possessed the money, both of us would have been devoured by the wolves. Has not your way of life proved to be impractical? The sannyasi replied with these wise words, Dear friend, Undoubtedly, your money has helped us today, but was it its possession or its disposition that really saved us? When I, I remember, when I, when I told the story to one of my friends, he said, this is why you should not have to be friend with the Swami. You should not be friendly with those fellows, dangerous guys. Yes, if we are not at that money, to which Sanyas is a fantastic question he asks. Is it, is it retaining that money or parting with that money that has saved us? What has saved? Imagine if you would have retained that money with you, what would have happened? Remember, it is always parting. But when it comes to renunciation, what renunciation talks about is a mental parting. Remember, we are not discussing in terms of physical parting here. Physical parting is easy. This mentally you have to part. What is that is, is going to be? Escape. This parting mentally is what renunciation is all about. That is where actually you get everything in life. Be it success or peace, bliss. Either case, you will get it only through mental parting. The parting is what is giving you his ease. But The problem is, we cannot part mentally. Difficulty is that mental parting is not there. That is why every religion has given, you know, charity as one of the compulsory spiritual discipline to be practiced. Why? Is that it's a training for you to do mental parting. Physical parting is a training ground. If you do there properly, there is a chance that you can do mental parting also properly. You have to part this, you have to move away from this. The problem we face is you cannot move away. Now go back to the first one we saw. The starting itself, I said. You have this experience, then you interpret that experience as pleasure, pain. All of us would have believed that, sir, I will get attached only to the pleasure one, sir. Pain one, I will move away from. Isn't it? This is what everyone believes. I move away from pain. But what you fail to recognize is the teasing of your mind. 
the problem of the mind the problem of the mind is it will not part from the painful experiences it will hang on to the painful experiences far more than a pleasant experience think carefully and theoretically you ask anyone this is why we don't go by this empirical data vedanta will never go by empirical data why because all empirical data is whatever you are collecting in terms of life is all faulty because you go and ask anyone pleasurable experience painful experience which one you will drop first mentally which one you would like to drop first every one will vouch saying sir i would want to drop the painful experience retain pleasurable experiences pleasurable memories only i wanted to have painful memories i want i don't wanted to have would you like to have a painful memories or pleasant memories that's why we never wait for answers you know we ask a question all questions of vedanta are rhetorical we don't want your answer because we know for certain any answer that you are going to give will be faulty in reality you hold on to and you holding on to is a classic one that's what this fellow you know they give a beautiful example is a you hold a cup of tea take a cup those of you who are having next to you now i know all of you are having a cup of tea next to you once in a while one fellow will switch off the video i know why is enjoy the video what is he doing now a drinking a cup you know they quickly they take two sips i am talking you are drinking this is the tragedy of life and all of those eating all they go on eating at this are you going to have any apple no how how he is going on that's the time i thought you know switch off the video man all the options to switch out the video it's fascinating to see one cup you hold what is the weight of a cup one glass of tea you hold what is the weight of it nothing you can hold it what is the big problem even if you are having you know arthritis still you can hold not a not a issue and hold it i say you hold on to that glass for entire glass full glass you have to be holding on what will happen just a glass of water that's it or tea just a glass what will happen 5 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes after 15 minutes what happens it starts becoming so heavy so heavy so heavy and if you if i force you to hold it for 5 hours i have to take you to hospital only you know the whole hand goes off pain so much all vedanta says is it's so heavy no put it down man we'll say what ah we painful i'll be holding on to it and then i will be saying what hands are paining hands are paining hands are paining put it down no that is what he is saying you know that hamlet movie that story all that he is giving no all that story is only this idea what is this that is why any one where to be talking about their problem to you their problem looks so small isn't it to you always so 
For this you are crying? Oh, my father passed away. Now everybody's father passes away, no? Right? Hey, my mother passed away. Business loss. Everybody has gone through loss. What is your problem? Oh, my reputation is gone. I don't want anybody to talk one bad word about me. You are not hearing, that's all. Everybody is talking bad only about you. You are not hearing it, that's all it is. One day, you know, it just, you know, it falls on your ear, that's it. Then what happens? He said that, he said that, he said that, he said that. What are you doing mentally now? Now somebody praises you also. What happens? Like really, initially, I don't think nowadays you are not doing now. Initially, after every class, I'll be getting a message. Oh, today's class was superb by someone or the other. Not that everybody will be, you know, talking about it every class, but someone will be sending. Initially, what we'll do? Keep checking. Like Instagram. When you start Instagram, what were you doing? Every following, everyone comes and following immediately, you check what? What is the following today? What's the following today? What's the following today? After the point of time, what happens? After a period, wow, class is super, class is super, class is super, class is super. You keep on repeating it to me. Yeah, of course it is pleasant one to hear, correct. But how much I will hold on to it? Vis-a-vis, -vis, one fellow says the class is pathetic. In my life, this is the one hour that I have wasted listening to this lecture. On how to write a comment on our, you know, the, what is it? YouTube channel. I don't know whether the comments are uh, on or off in our channel. I don't know. I told them to keep it on. Anyway. Just to, you know, get some entertainment. One fellow writes, now what happens? You see that. So long as you are not seeing it, there's no problem. The moment you see that, what happens? He said that. He said that. He said that. What is wrong? What is wrong? Why is he saying that? Why is he? Why is he? The mind will go on repeating that much, much more. And every time it repeats that painful experience, it retains that intensity of that experience. Whereas, the pleasant experience intensity is not maintained. Wedding day versus 20th anniversary, 25th anniversary. What is the difference? 20th anniversary, what do you do? No excitement at all. In fact, there is more of mocking. More of teasing only. But first wedding is what? Such a pleasant experience. It is so pleasurable, so happy. Now, when you are when you are reliving that every year, anniversary, 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 is the intensity getting more and more, or it is losing it that losing that intensity for all the ple ple pleasures of life we keep the immediate past no aggregate for all pains of life aggregate we don't compartment, we don't split that. This is what your mind is doing to you. So you are attached to what? Remember, you are attached more to the pain of life than the pleasures of life. That gets, that's why when you detect, when you, when you see actually what is the real problem there, it is so small actually speaking. 
but your mind teases you by visiting it again and again and again. That mental visitation to that experience again and again is called, is the cause of attachment. That's called musing. You go through that over and over and over. And every time you go through a painful experience, you intensify it. Now what is the problem, sir? Now the problem is, the problem is not stopping. It gets into different, different angles. That's why I told you, read that book, The Holocaust of Attachment. Those who are not having it, get the book first. You know, compulsory read, that is. Reading in the sense, not just, you know, reading. You have to study the book properly. Because that explains your current condition. What is actually happening to you? The problem is not this. It moves into very many angles, actually. You see, taking the same example of holding the cup, right? T, take the same, same example. Every one of us have got our own pain threshold capacity, isn't it? Everyone has their own levels. I saw one video, you know, hilarious that was. Actually, it should not be, they are heartless people, but you know, it is actually hilarious to see that. One lady of around 55 or so, crying so much for taking the vaccination injection. Somebody forwarded that to me. Oh my God. It was like, even a baby will not cry like that. You know? Oh, the kids are far better. This lady, and she is not stopping even after the injection is over. You know, she's not stopping. No, poor thing, you know. See, she has a threshold. I remember when Purni was about, you know, seven or so, we had to take her, you know, for some blood, you know, test. So they had to extract blood. So I took her to this, this one, I told Kritika, you don't come, I will take her. Because I know, you know, what will happen there. So I took Purni, in Basambudi only here, that, you know, diagnostic center, so we went there. And the fellow is going to give that injection, you know. And the fellow is very sweetly, he says, look that direction, look that direction. She asked him, why? No, I'm going to inject. He says, I want to see. I wanted to see how you are taking blood from me. And he's injecting and he is extracting blood and his blood coming out and she's looking at it and says, wow, he's so fascinated. I said, we, you have your own threshold, but there are people, you know, who get fractured. You know, a fracture you get and still you are normal. And not that you don't tell in the house. You know, there's one fellow was telling me, you know, one uh, lady was telling me about her son. You know, he fell, he had a fracture. He didn't even tell me. He quietly went into his room. I said, that is not because he had pain threshold. It is because of your attachment is. Because the first thing what you will do is what? Instead of taking him, sympathizing with that boy and taking him to the hospital, you will go, ah, 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 you will go. Therefore, what? He said, nonsense, I'll go inside. Quietly, he went inside. It only shows how much you are attached to him than his, you know, pain withstanding capacity. But whatever the case, Every one of us have X amount of pain resistance power. Same way we have in our mental state also, we have a sorrow resistance power. Everybody has it. You see, you can't deny that. Like physically we can withstand some pain, mentally also we are capable of withstanding X amount of pain. The problem of this attachment is 
after you come to that threshold, you can't hold it beyond you put it down. Right, till then you can hold it. Till then you can hold it. Once that pain threshold you touch, you put it down. Now when with this attachment, what happens, he says is, you give up much, much before even your physical strain can come out. In any experience, any painful experiences of life, you give up mentally sooner than you are constrained. See? That is the problem of attachment. And that leads to your failure. That's how people give up. Halfway through, they give up. Why they give up? Because they are so attached to it. There's so much of attachment. They give up very soon. Much, much earlier. But remember, it is that parting is what is going to give you this. It is a parting that gives you pleasure. This is not here. The problem with renunciation is that it has a detestable front. See, the starting point is detestable. People find it hard to accept the concept of detachment. The very thought of it sends a shiver down the spine. The idea of detachment stings you. Little do you realize that the sting of renunciation transports you to a higher plane, to permanent peace and bliss. It relieves you from all worry and anxiety associated with the world. The initial feel of renunciation acts like a wasp's sting in a dream. The dreamer's pain is momentary for it wakes him up. He is freed from all trouble, worry, anxiety pertaining to the dream world. Practicing detachment, therefore, may be initially painful, but it is all gainful. It ushers you to greater planes of happiness, leading you to the bliss of Supreme Self. It stings you, but it wakes you. It wakes you up. Like he gives example that sting, that swapna in Havat. In the dream, a lion pounces on you. You get scared of that lion and you wake up. What has happened? You are relieved of all the problems of dream. All the trials and tribulations of dream is gone. Yeah, woke up. But how did you wake up, sir? You woke up because of the line. Same way, this renunciation works like that. It stings you, but it wakes you up. Now, sir, we also want to wake up like we do in the temple, you know. They sing Pallanda and wake up God. Like that, can we also wake up to reality? Sorry, no chance. There is no other way. Only with the sting you can wake up. It's impossible. Because of what? You are in so, so, so much of deep dash. The only way you can be woken up is what? You are whack on it. Like there are people, you know, you walk in the room, they'll wake up. Like this cat sleep, they say. They're so light. Sleep, and my you know my brother was sleeping like that. One day he decided to you know, lock himself in the room and study. That's what he used to do regularly. You know. But one day we didn't pay attention. We left him alone in the room. And after we finished all our TV serial and everything, you know, he wanted to go and sleep in the room. So we started knocking the door. He's not opening. We were knocking and knocking and knocking, it's not opening. And you know what to do. And then I had to climb. I went to the other side, climbed that uh, you know window and broke the glass. And I saw, I was shocked because the fellow was on the floor. I don't know what happened to him. 
We were simply on the floor. So scary that sight was. I told them, you know, fortunately we had a gap in that, uh, you know, this one. So I told them, pour water inside, you know, he'll wake up. You know, if he's fainted or we don't know what had happened to him. They were pouring water and he was fully in that pool of water in the room. He's not waking up. From some neighbor's house, you know, we had that water buchi, and, you know, that uh, stick to clean, the, you know, the ceiling and all. We got that. And I brought that one and gave a whack to that fellow. Then suddenly he woke up. Ah, huh? yeah. You are so scared, you know. Because I couldn't tell my parents also. Even in their house, you know, I couldn't tell my father, my mother, my grandma, and you know, his mother all so shocked. And that fellow is sleeping like that. Now, what music we can play and wake him up? You play music, you will speak, you sleep better. You go deeper and deeper. Like that, you are so involved in your samsara. The only way you can be woken up is through this thing. That a shock is needed. It is detestable in the beginning. Renunciation is detestable in the beginning. But you can't avoid it. You see, you, you can't. When your mind gets disturbed, your body gets disturbed. That's why today they say most of this 21st century man, human suffering, diseases, all psychosomatic in nature. It's not just disease. In the 18th century, 17th century, 15th century, man had you know diseases, all physical in nature. Now it's no longer physical. The diseases were all psychosomatic in nature. Uh, the medical fraternity. Fascinating to see that. Why is that? Mind is disturbed, body gets disturbed. Now you can't reverse it. Don't try. So I will make body correct when the mind get all right. That is not possible. Converse will not work. This way it will work. The reverse it will not work. It's like saying, yoga is boga. Therefore, can we say, boga is yoga? It doesn't work that way. Like that, you know, you can't go reverse. This way, correct. Converse is not true here. See, be careful, he says. Wake up. But renunciation will be painful. But it is all gainful, he says. It is painful. It's all gain. You gain everything through renunciation. You want success, renunciation. You want this, renunciation. You want that, everything is this. See you in the next class.